This is part 16 of the basic Python programming tutorial for Blender users. And in this lesson, we'll take a look at uh, some changes in the code and also some changes in the scene, at least as far as the particle system is concerned, for those of you who might not be familiar with it. So let's just go look at this side. We're going to look at, well, that's what we're going to end up doing. But let's just, let's go in here and add a, just a separate object to the scene real quick. So I'll add a cube right there, I'll scale it up so I can see it. I press DEL to zoom in like that. So there it is like that. And I'm going to add a particle system to it here. Just regular particle system. And I'll change the normals. If I, when I press Alt A, there it is working like that. But sometimes I don't want just the particles to flow out of it. Sometimes, like in this case down here, if we look up, let's see if I can zoom out of here and look at these guys instead, notice that this is our particle system but instead it has a bunch of cubes being emanated from the each one of the fountain heads down here that's what we're going to do in the lesson but if you look closely right there's a bunch of cubes coming out of it instead of just a separate particle and where is this where is that other guy I'm going to press that there he is back here all right so if you're not familiar with it we'll just step through it real quick just so you know is you come down here and it, where it defaults as halo for the particle system and you just press you click object and you give it a name and see it's called a dupli object dupli object is for the old thing of dupliverts remember that from earlier days of blender and you come in here and you just pick an object and then that object will emanate from the face instead of a the halo itself and then you can set the size of the object right here. It doesn't matter the size that you set in here for a separate object. What matters is like well I'll oh, we'll just do it here. We'll just add another object to the scene. I'll add a I'll add a cone right there. And then for this one here I'm gonna pick the cone in the scene. So when I run Alt A, there's a bunch of little cones and I'll come down here and change this, then I get larger and larger cones coming out of it like that. So that's what we're doing as far as sending outside of the fountains. So I'm going to get rid of this and get rid of this and then now let's go look at the code. Alright so uh, we're, now we're back down into modify all fountain particles again and there I've changed this one down here and commented out the other one. Now what I've added to this is here's the settings we had done the lifetime settings before and now right here I say don't render with halo use an object so I set the render type to object and let's see if you go back into the let's even get this guy again back up here zoom out go get an object like this and look at the particle and this should say that when I hover over it it says particle systems dot render underscore type all right so it's there so there it is render underscore type is object uh, the dupe object I'm giving that a variable name is bpy dot dated objects dot is named cube is what I'm using in the scene there's an object somewhere in there named cube and then I set it as the the dupli object right the duplicated object and then I change the particle size which we just saw and the number of particles for that particle system and then the start frame and the end frame like that and that's how and then as far as so I interactively work back and forth and in this case if we run it you'll see from the beginning like this so all I'm doing is I'm spitting out these cubes and the reason for using cubes is because then you can just render them with what kind of shading you want and lighting and so they're spitting out like this it's just just an example I'm not trying to make a tornado I assure you I would never you this is the vortex fig physics built in but this is certainly not the way I would create a tornado but uh, up in here somewhere what is that field oh that's it so I have a I just manually placed in the scene if I go to the physics button over here I have a vortex with a strength of 1.2 sitting in the scene right there and that's what's doing that you know usually you can just move this stuff around on the fly so if I was to see it sitting on layer where that, that vortex is on layer 1 but there's nothing over there on layer 5 right now so if I just press M5 
like that, the vortex is gone. Oh, it should be gone. Oh, it will be gone. So the vortex is over here on layer 5, and now it's not being affected by it. Like that. All right? So um, really the, the point of this lesson just briefly was to give you the other settings in case you want to change it, because I use objects all the time versus just particle systems. I use them both, but this is a really, really important one to use as well. So I'll just play around with that. And then starting in the next lesson, we'll start, uh, we'll look at rotating objects, which should be really straightforward. But more importantly, we're going to go back and address uh, axes. So because I found that uh, changing your axis from global to local to normal is a really, really powerful way to work. And we want to be able to enable that within our code as well when we flip these around because in when we do when we're doing the particles right now, what what we have been doing is we've been spitting them out of the normal in a normal direction, or basically perpendicular to the face of the object. But when you're working with the Blender's particle system, if you're using say, uh, well, if you rotate this around, sometimes where is this thing? I'll go. I'll show you right in here. We'll go over to the particle system like this and go down here. If for the, if you're not familiar with this. Where is this down here? See, we had set the normal value at 80 when we built the scene initially. I'm going to stop this just for a second. And I'll show you up in here under the main fountain design. There it is. We set the normal factor like this. But I don't really necessarily want the normal factor in many cases. In fact, in most cases, I don't want to just kick it out of the face. But I want to admit it in an X, Y, or Z direction, or a combination of these three as well. But when you emit, use this emitter object, and this is with the object underscore line underscore factor, this has to be associated with the local axis. So that can really throw you, because if you put a particle in the scene, an object in the scene, and you go, oh, I want to move it in the X direction, well, it doesn't always move in the X direction, because by default, when you're coming up in Blender, you always come up and you're looking at the global axis. So we're really going to get used to using the local axis and the normal axis as well. These three I use all the time, and I'll show you why. They're really powerful, but we'll do that in the next lesson. All right, well, that's it for now, and I'll see you in the next lesson.